Hey guys, it's Decoran here. Welcome back to our PC build video. Today we'll be building the best $2,400 gaming PC. That is right. Now there is actually a story to this PC build, but before we get into that, let's get into the specs. For our CPU, we have the i9-9900K. That is right. Now this might not be the most insane gaming CPU or most modern CPU, but it's still an absolute beast in actually 2024. If you guys know, once I got this originally, it was like $500. But since the whole third party market has a ton of them now, they're like around 200 to 350 if you can find them there. But I cannot wait to build this CPU because the reward behind this PC build originally was I had this CPU and I had the GPU and stuff like that it was working perfectly fine. However, I was testing some stuff, wasn't on my UPS, power outage happened, killed the board. So I had to get a replacement board and the upgrade is actually insane. For the motherboard, we have the MSI Meg Z390 Godlike. This is an absolute beast of the motherboard, like high end, high end. We have a price of $700, has four PCI 16 slots, three M.2 slots, and all the bells and whistles you can actually think of from a motherboard. Now, the craziest part about this, this is the replacement board for my original MSI motherboard, but it's a massive upgrade because this is $700, right? However, we got a Facebook Marketplace for $150. Like, not even like, that's like less than one third of the price. So yeah, I cannot wait to use this motherboard and I tested the hell out of it before we actually uh, uh, you build it and got it off Facebook Marketplace and everything works perfectly fine. Unless something goes wrong in this PC build video, fingers crossed. For RAM, we have the Corsair Vengeance 32 gigabyte kit. This is 36 megahertz, which is really nice. And of course, this will be perfect for our gaming PC because it only comes at $70. And really for a gaming PC, you only need 16 gigabytes. However, I would recommend just getting 32, the future proof it, just in case down the line you need so. So I'm very much looking forward to using this RAM. For the CPU cooler, we got the Deepcool LT720. This is my first ever AIO cooler. So I'm curious to see how the performance from it is. I'm also a little hesitant too, just because of the fact that I haven't messed with an AIO cooler, even though I built multiple pieces in the past. All of them had fan cooling, so yeah, air coolers. So this will be my first one. So yeah, hopefully it won't mess anything up. Luckily, this doesn't come at a crazy price, even though it's like a 36 millimeter radiator. It only cost us $109. Plus tax, it was like 119, but we won't worry about that. So like, I'm looking forward to it. For our boot drive, we have the Samsung 9A Pro 1 terabyte M.2. That's right. This is like the best drive you can get on the market because it's $109. It's extremely fast and also the performance from this is really freaking good and of course you can't really build a pc with less than 500 gigabytes or 500 gigabytes nowadays you at least need one terabyte of boost storage so this will be perfect for the job now something to keep in mind we will be also adding some more drives to this pc build like a four terabyte hard drive from seagate that's like half the price of this but it'll have mass storage that we can put extra games on it or any extra piece of media that we want to that we normally wouldn't have to keep on this actual drive so just something to keep in mind i will also have that link down below if you are interested and any of the links you do use during this pc build video will support the channel so always appreciate it now for the gpu we have the rtx 2080 super that is right this is probably my favorite gpu i have on hand because it's founders edition they look absolutely amazing the price for this thing is 700 dollars however you can find them cheaper on the third hand market for even less than that like 250 to sometimes 150 you just got to find the right vendor and i would honestly recommend don't buy this new buy this from the third hand market for significantly less from a reliable source and 10 out of 10 can recommend for our power supply we have the thermal take 780 plus power supply this is only a white rating however i've used this for multiple pc builds of videos in the past and of course i've had no problems with this power supply so 10 out of 10 can recommend and only cost us $55. So like, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. For a PC case, we went with the Monotech Air 903 Max. This is an ATX case, will go perfect with our motherboard, only cost us $80. But the good thing about this actual case, it comes with the following three intake fans that are 140 and they are RGB and then one 140 exhaust fan too. So it comes with some really good fans already right the rip. And it's honestly one of those cases is like the price to performance is good. Like it all has the essentials and that's all you really need. And you don't have to spend like another hundred to two hundred dollars on RGB. So we'll love to see it. So let's get into building it. So the first thing we want to do is install our CPU. Now this is really simple. We want to line the gold triangle, the triangle and actually the socket thing so you can see there's a silver triangle on the bottom all you do is make sure that lines on up and when you just pop this on open lift it up just slightly i'm trying to do this one in hand so just give me a second and we're just going to line that up on in there and it should just fall into place with no problem with that though our cpu is good now we just do the same thing we're going to drop this on down make sure it actually goes under the actual screw and we want to push it like so place a little lever right under there with that our cpu is installed the next thing we're gonna do is install a RAM. And now of course, we just wanna make sure to take that tooth that's on the bottom here, 
plan of course on this side and we want to install into our two and four slots so we're going to open up our two slot and our four slot and this motherboard actually is one of those boards where it doesn't have one where you push it back on the bottom sometimes they do sometimes they don't and of course it's not like that so we're make sure you line it up just properly so we know it needs to go this way so we're going to place it in from the bottom side first line to the top and then if everything goes in there right then it should just slip in like so and then what we're going to do is push it on in by pushing one side in and then you'll hear click same thing on the other side bang first rams installed same roll apply make sure you line it on up of course we're going to take this side since we know this one doesn't fold back and of course line it on up with the actual four slot just perfectly it should just slip on in once it does you push it down one side push it down the other side with that our ram is installed the next thing we do is install our m.2 so what we do is grab our m.2 make sure that the tooth on the actual bottom right that matches the actual board so you can see it's all into our swap slot we're gonna wiggle that on in here of course if it should just slip in like so perfect now what we do get our screw and also a screwdriver so the next thing we want to do is install the m.2 all we have to do is push it down now that we lined it on up and then carefully just take our m.2 screw and just screw it on into the slot of the motherboard and with that we are good to go with our m.2 now we can just install this into our case now before we install our motherboard we will have to remove this case fan in the back here because it actually gets in the way so let's quickly and take this on out once we're doing that, we can just move this case fan to the side for the time being. Now we might have to unplug it just because of the fact that it doesn't give us, no, never mind, it does give us enough slack to move it on the way. I just need to move it for a second. So never mind, that works perfectly. Now we got to install, of course, our motherboard. Of course, this has a pre-installed IO shield. So all we have to do, in theory, is just line this on up with our actual case. We're just going to move the screw that's on the way. And we just want to line this up with the IO on the back. The nice thing about these high-end motherboards is that they just come with the IO shield perfectly installed. So literally, we just align it up like so and we're already good to go, which didn't honestly take too much time because I didn't have to push it on in. Next thing we'll do is install our motherboard. All we have to do is take these screws from actually the little box that came with the case and take them and just screw them on into the holes. Cause I guess you can see like this one up top, there's like one on the CPU side right there, which is kind of hard to see. You can see there's like one there on the top, one on below, and then also another two right there. So we're just gonna get these all screwed in real quick here. Now that our motherboard's installed and all good to go, the only thing we need to do is plug in every single cable for the motherboard. Now, I have a separate video on how to install every single cable on an actual motherboard, so definitely check out that video. I'm just going to speed run this real quick. I will have a separate video coming out how to install an AIO cooler because I'm learning for myself. So I just don't want to bore you with me messing around with it for like half an hour. So I'm going to make a separate video dedicated just how to do it perfectly the first time around. Okay, moment of truth, does this thing just boot? I have everything plugged in properly. So in fairness, and not fairness, in all theory, it should just boot up, but we'll see. I think I had it the opposite way. I think it was supposed to be one. Okay. That's a good sign, good sign. We'll have to see it, no error codes right off the rip. Does it actually boot over here though? That's the big question. Okay, so we are having a problem. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but it's getting stuck between the RAM and also the CPU. So I'm gonna try to figure this out real quick. Two hours later. Okay, so I removed one of the RAM sticks because that air code 4555. And by removing one of the sticks, it just worked perfectly fine. So we seem to be good. I'm just gonna quickly add the other stick and just see if it negatively impacts it or if it was just like a temporary issue. Okay, the first game we're testing is Valorant. Now, keep in mind, we are on low settings all the way around. So yeah, the only problem I did find out while testing this PC was that for some reason, the one of the dim slots is not acting right. Now, originally when I tested this motherboard from the guy I got it from, there was absolutely no problems. The two and four slots work perfectly fine. However, the four slot is now acting weird. So I'm not entirely sure what's up with it. I assume it's just a bad uh, slot, which doesn't really impact me too much. Just kind of unfortunate with this motherboard. But I think honestly, the CPU will make up for the lack of a uh, dual channel, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But of course, gonna see what that's so. though. But uh, the FPS wise on low setting is honestly not as high as I thought it would be. Like, I'm not entirely sure why. It's really like rough. Now, if we were to turn everything on high settings, for example, here, we will get a little bit less FPS. Actually, no, we, we drop a lot of FPS. This is like, this is basically non playable at this point. Like 60 FPS on average. I swear though, I feel like there's something wrong with my settings. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me turn off everything here. I'm not tripping. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not tripping. There, there's, 
this is literally on high settings i'm only getting 60 fps and i'm not entirely sure why that's the case i'm not particularly the best at valorant however it's been a few minutes now in low settings so supposedly we're doing pretty good so far fps wise honestly i kind of thought on valorant low settings we would hit over 200 fps and stuff like that with no problems i should have really to uh, have paired specs for my pc that's a uh, six core 12 thread compare this cpu uh because then it would have been like better results to see like what the actual difference is our temps though are not bad we've been gaming for like a minute now almost an hour and we're currently heading over only 50 to 60 we haven't really gone to 70 at all and of course i just can't hit a single guy for life of me so our cpu temps aren't particularly absolute uh atrocious not compared to like my air cooler my air cooler would have been like 70 the near 80 at times so that's that's to see and of course i just got doing okay next up we got apex legends now keep in mind we have on the highest settings possible everything is maxed out balls to the walls and so far our fps is pretty good i say i will say one thing that's kind of irritating is that my sense is absolutely way too high but we're averaging around 100 plus 20 to do 180 fps on max settings which is not bad so with this game is cool because apex you can literally have max settings right and then after a certain point in time if you switch it to like uh what's it called low settings like the lowest things possible you'll get double your fps usually uh so nine out of ten times the only thing i will really need to fix is my sliding keys and because i'm trying to start a slide jump and i can't exactly do that it's so amazing but uh now we're good we can actually do our movement i can't even heal though properly because all my keys are messed up so that's awesome i'm gonna fix that later But we're doing currently gun run and honestly not performing too bad right now these people are just like mia though give it a few minutes to kind of test out and see how it performs i mean absolutely from every single possible angle nice i will say it does not help me that all my things are completely and utterly messed up in this game it really does put a kind of a uh, nail in my jam you know what i'm saying Oh my god, there's so many people here. What? Oh my god, I can't I can't slide. I can't slide. What the fuck? I can't slide jump. Okay, whatever. Uh, what we'll do now is we're gonna try Apex to met at the lowest settings possible instead. Just kind of see what we can do with this. I'm really curious to see how the results of this are. Hopefully, it's really freaking good. With best things possible on low, we should be seeing a lot more FPS improvement, but we're just going to wait to find out. Three gigs, that's fine. And then we're going to do bilinear. And we can leave all this the same. Now, what's our FPS looking like once we switch that? It's going to take a second to process this information. Okay, we're going up. We're going up, baby. Come on, dude. What's going on? I'm looking. Okay, 200. Okay, not bad. We now have around 200 to 130 FPS in Apex. It's kind of bouncing around right now and isn't kind of trying to really stabilizing, which is interesting. But it's definitely higher than it was earlier. I was honestly expecting to get more than 240. I think what really doesn't help is that we don't have like dual channel memory right now. Like, yeah, we have our memory at 36 megahertz, right? And we have 16 gigs. However, it's single channel, not dual channel. So you can see kind of like the impact from that is from not having that actual, actual you know, oomph. It's uh, negatively impacting our FPS. But yeah, I don't, I don't know though. It's definitely way more than playable. Like this is 100% playable. It's just kind of unfortunate that we're missing out an opportunity because one of the slots got mixed up. Like for our memory slot didn't actually get mixed up here. We'd be chilling, but of course it can't be that simple, unfortunately. And of course, Jumped by two different guys. Okay, we're now in the firing for Apex. I'm just kind of curious about something. I'm looking at the meter for Apex, and it's, I will say one thing though. Compared to my old PC, the FPS drastically changes. Like, at one moment it could be literally like 170, another moment it could be like 250. So like, honestly, the FPS is way way better than my old PC with the six core. 
in 12th third with the CPU with the i9 it actually is making up by having faster processing higher clocks compared to like having that like lacking piece of ram like technically if we had dual channel it'd be even more insane but like the fps right now while running around kind of just doing our thing is actually very very usable like i was kind of concerned we wouldn't be able to hit like 240 but now the thing is i think we can and i'm kind of curious now if we limit our fps okay so next up we got fortnite honestly i cannot comprehend fortnite and how like, it's so freaking demanding uh just letting you guys know off the rip when we started landing in on fx settings it was basically unplayable it was like 10 or 20 fps i will say though i don't feel like when i test fortnite i test fortnite properly like, i always feel like i'm messing up a setting artist though like i'll show you guys like, the settings we have right now of everything set to low unlimited fps uh direct 12 uh we have of course motion blur off reset of course low we have nvidia dlss like i don't know if there's something i'm missing or if there's a hidden setting in fortnite when i test stuff but of course it's not particularly the best and when you did try playing epic earlier which i of course will enable that just to kind of show you guys that i believe you do play on epic which i do not recommend playing fortnite and epic you can see right here that we're only gaining around the 30 to 50 fps like the game looks so freaking good don't get me wrong the game looks absolutely gorgeous but the frame rate makes it completely unplayable I, and this is not even like the ray tracing on and or anything to do, so just something kind of to keep in mind stuff but yeah if, if i'm ever testing like a game wrong feel free to let me know in the comments guys because i feel like some games i'm just like perfectly good other times i'm just testing stuff and just doesn't make any sense but yeah do not play fortnite on epic settings uh definitely play on low you're ready to get you're gonna get over 100 fps that way but so i got some good news and some bad news so the good news is the game pc works perfectly fine the performance from it is pretty good the bad news is it could be doing so much better it's just so unfortunate so originally we had that error code was like 45 55 i tried reinstalling the ram because i was like oh maybe the ram's not installed properly i tried that okay that didn't work oh maybe it's the ram kit went bad okay let me try this it didn't work i even used the g scale one which is the original one i tested on this motherboard from this guy and both slots work fine for the two and four but i'm pretty confident to say the four slot died on me like it is not working whatsoever so we're missing on a lot of potential actual fps because of that maybe like above 200 consistently the 240 i saw somebody else's video where the same similar setup the only difference is they have the ks and of course they're getting like over 240 250 at times so yeah single channel definitely not for the win uh dual channel all the way for gaming so like yeah this that's obvious but i just want to quickly say that so the good thing about this is this is not like my permanent gaming pc like originally it was going to be if it actually performed well but unfortunately when i try to revive this system just did not work perfectly good because you know the motherboard died originally but now the ram slot died so you know and my luck with this pc build it's just like not particularly best maybe this is a sign just don't build an old intel platforms or don't revive an old intel pc if things go wrong you know what i'm saying we're gonna build on an old platform build on am4 because honestly even though the platform's technically dead they have so many cpus you can upgrade to from like a quad core the six core the eight core and all that jazz just like absolutely ridiculous but uh yeah i just i just thought i'd share my results with you guys and just to give you the honest truth don't build an old intel i'm gonna work on this pc probably keep gaming on it for a bit but you know for a fact the next pc build video is gonna be like an 800 dollars pc build video and that thing's gonna be an absolute monster so make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss out on that video but the good thing about this is though that if you were building a pc for like two thousand four hundred dollar price wise that's like from 2019 to 2020 that's pretty good but nowadays you can build that for like half the price like we did a pc build recently for like what is it the uh 1300 game pc 4070 ti eight core cpu and it absolutely destroyed every single game we threw at it so like yeah we're gonna build something modern next time and it's gonna absolutely crush this thing you know what i'm saying but if you guys enjoyed my video here today and my pain and suffering then you know what to do make sure to smash the like button i'll see you guys back here for another tech video tech grant